The mid-size five-door hatchback, the Volkswagen Golf, the Ford Focus, used to be Europeans' favourite type of car, but that was before the SUV, and nowadays we buy three SUVs to every one mid-size hatchback. But here's a car that hopes to stop all that, Peugeot's new 308. There are three compelling reasons why you might choose a 308 over an SUV. One, it's electrified. There'll be two plug-in hybrid engines at launch and a pure electric version is coming too. Secondly, it's efficient. It's lighter than an SUV and it has better aerodynamics and of course you'll get better fuel economy. And thirdly, it's really rather lovely inside. It's got a real upmarket quality push there are big digital touch screens with a new infotainment system called iConnect and there's a bit more space than in the outgoing model. When it comes to design, the 308 embraces the Peugeot family look. It's got those LED fang daytime running lights you've seen on the 208 and 508 and a grille with horizontal silver accents to make the car look wider and rear claw lamps. Peugeot's also kept the side profile much the same. So the glass house and rear pillar have that same graphical shape as the outgoing cars. What you might not have noticed is the new proportions. Compared with the outgoing car, the bonnet is longer, that pushes the cabin backwards, and the wheels are pushed out closer to the ends of the car. It's lower too. All of this adds up to make the new 308 look more dynamic and sporty. And if you're sizing one up for your garage, this 308 measures 4.36 metres long by 1.85 metres wide. So the first thing you'll notice about the new 308 is that enormous new Peugeot Lion badge. I mean, you can't miss it. It's so big that it's dropped the lower number plate down onto the bumper there at a speed bump bothering height. Now, there are a couple of really nice design secrets about that new logo. First thing is the radar, the thing that looks ahead and spots if the autonomous emergency braking needs to kick in because the traffic in front has stopped, that's hidden behind the badge. And the second thing is, there was no firm decision to actually put it on this car, but when the designers were sketching their proposals for the new fair weights, all of them kept drawing the new Lion badge on the front, and in the end, the executives decided to start putting it onto this car. When it comes to engines, Peugeot's mantra is to offer customers the power of choice. At launch in the UK, there'll be one diesel, one petrol, and two plug-in hybrids. The diesel, is a 1.5 litre four cylinder unit with 130 horsepower. The car's MPG figures are still being certified, but the diesel should emit 117 grams of CO2 per kilometre. That's four grams saving over the outgoing car. And that's down to Peugeot's holistic approach to efficiency. The 308 may be bigger, but it's no heavier than the outgoing car and improved aerodynamics reduce drag. The 1.2 litre turbocharged petrol engine comes with 130 horsepower. Both the diesel and petrol are coupled to an eight speed automatic transmission. But the zeitgeisty low tax engines are the two plug-in hybrids. Both combine a four cylinder petrol engine with an electric motor and the eight speed auto. This is the hybrid 225, the performance flagship with 180 horsepower. With 36 miles of electric range, its CO2 emissions are just 26 grams per kilometre. The hybrid 180 packs 150 horsepower. It offers an extra mile of electric range, so 37 miles, and a gram less CO2, so it makes 25 grams per kilometre. The hybrid's lithium ion battery will take about two hours to charge off a seven kilowatt wall box, or seven hours off a plug. Peugeot says the new 308 offers a big step up in quality and there are some lovely touches like this aluminium door insert and some piano gloss black trim around the air vents. And the seats are really comfy with some lovely green highlight stitching. Peugeot claims there's up to 34 litres of stowage in the cockpit. There's a big cubby under the armrest, a couple of cup holders and in the door bins there's space for a big bottle of water. In comes that bank of digital keys, which Peugeot calls iToggle, allowing owners to shortcut to their most used functions. The 10-inch central touchscreen is standard and it has a tile approach where apps or widgets can be deployed on pages, a lot like a smartphone or tablet. This infotainment is called iConnect by Peugeot. 
The screen is set lower than before, which makes it within easy reach, but that does mean the driver's eyes will drop a little lower. The good news is there's also a digital driver's display, which comes on a 10 inch screen with lots of lovely animations and customizable screens. On upper spec trims like this GT Premium, it comes with a 3D effect too. Up to eight driver's profiles and infotainment settings can be established and two phones link simultaneously and wirelessly. The wheelbase stretch of five centimeters has mostly been channeled into the rear seats, boosting legroom. There's plenty of headroom too. The boot will stow a decent 412 litres on the combustion engine hatchbacks. This dips to 361 litres on plug-in hybrid models due to the battery beneath the boot floor. Fold the rear seats flat and you get 1,323 litres of cargo capacity. So that's our first look at Peugeot's new 308 five-door hatchback. UK delivery should begin in the final three months of the year. But what do you think? Does it have enough substance and style to make you shun that SUV? If you don't need the extra space and practicality, it's probably a no-brainer. But let us know what you think in the comments below. And stay tuned to Parker's website and social channels for our first drive, which is set for September time. <laughs>